Former Nazi secretary Trottel Junge is interviewed about her time with fanatical Nazi leader Adolf Hitler, recalling the events that led to her survival after the war. On a cold late night on November 1942, 22-year-old Trottel and a few young German ladies are being relocated to the Wolf's Lair in East Prussia as they prepare for a personal assessment from the Nazi leader for a secretary position. Trottel is chosen and led inside the dictator's room to type every word of his speech as he dictates. Minutes later, the young woman leaves the room looking for Lorne, only to happily surprise the others she got accepted. Two and a half years later, in Berlin, Hitler is celebrating his 56th birthday amid World War II. Troutel and her friends wake up from the sound of enemy artillery fire near their dormitory. In the Fuhrer bunker, Hitler becomes angry when he is informed that the Soviet Red Army will soon be approaching the city center. Later, as high-ranking Nazi officials gather in the hall, Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler and SS Gruppenfuhrer Hermann Fagelein debate whether Hitler should relocate elsewhere to keep the Reich alive if Berlin falls into Russian hands. Not long after, Hitler enters the room, hiding his hand behind his back as it shakes uncontrollably. In another part of Berlin, SS Dr. Obersturmbahnfuhrer Ernst Günther Schenk watches as documents are being burned in his building due to Operation Clausewitz. He learns from a superior officer that Berlin will make its last stand, forcing evacuation procedures for all government officials. Bound by his Hippocratic Oath, the doctor persuades him to let him stay to aid the injured and provide food. Later, after Hitler convenes with his officials, Himmler shakes the dictator's hand while telling him that it is not too late to arrange a political compromise with the Allied forces, only for Hitler to refuse. Disappointed by this decision, Himmler confides with Fagelein about Berlin's imminent fall, revealing he will contact the Allies without Hitler's knowledge, despite the warning that he will commit treason. He abruptly leaves as a Berbefelsleiter Albert Speer arrives, saying he is headed to Hohenlinken to aid the Northerners in the Battle of Berlin. Later, Speer meets with Hitler and lets him inspect the models he had constructed of his vision for the Reich's future. Fagelein and Trautel implore Hitler to leave Berlin if he wants the Reich to flourish as he envisioned. However, Speer believes he must stand by Germany. Meanwhile, as families scramble along the war-torn streets of Berlin, Hitler youth child soldiers, including Peter Kronz, are reprimanded by his father for defending the city when the war has already been lost to the Russians. Peter calls him a coward and runs away, disappointed that he is not proud of him for destroying two enemy tanks and getting awarded by Hitler. At a meeting in the Fuhrer bunker, Hitler forbids the 9th Division Army from retreating, ordering that Obergruppenfuhrer Felix Steiner's units launch a counterattack from the north. The officials, including General Oberst Alfred Jodl, argue about the plan's efficacy, leaving the dictator enraged. Hitler then orders SS Brigade Fuhrer Wilhelm Mont that his army must protect Berlin until the end without evacuating civilians. The meeting causes the officers to debate whether Hitler is getting out of control and if they must take action. Later, Hitler steps out of the bunker to award Peter his medal, hailing him and the youth soldiers as heroes of Germany. As the night grows, Hitler's wife, Eva Braun, throws a party in the Reich Chancellery. At the same time, Hitler and Speer discuss the proposed scorched earth policy. The Oberbefehlsleiter worries about obliterating Germany, but Hitler believes the German people have become irrelevant, exposing their weakness and must die through their hands. Meanwhile, Fagelein confronts Eva, imploring her to evacuate the city with Hitler, but she dismisses him and continues partying despite the bombings outside. However, the celebration halts as artillery fire blasts the Chancellery. The following day, General Helmut Weidling is accused of treason for moving a command post and will be executed. He tries to clear his name at the bunker, justifying his actions were necessary. He is later informed that Hitler promoted him to commander of Berlin's defense after feeling impressed with his report. Elsewhere, as Russians approach the city, Dr. Schenk sneaks inside a war-torn hospital to look for survivors, only to find the staff slaughtered and elderly patients left in a room. Meanwhile, Peter attempts to disable the enemy tank but forcibly retreats upon seeing the Soviets bombard the area. Inside the bunker, Troutel and her friend, Gerda, worry about the attacks above ground, believing Steiner's forces should have arrived and defended the city against the Red Army. Fagelein informs them to flee while there is still time, diminishing the possibility of Steiner's counterattack happening anytime soon. Later, the mood in the Situation Room becomes tense as a dissatisfied Hitler begins a furious tirade, pointing out the failures of his officers and declaring them cowardly traitors for ignoring his orders. Exhausted, he states the war is lost, though he would rather kill himself than leave Berlin. Eva kisses him as he leaves the room, promising never to leave his side. Fagelein tells the officials that they can freely make their own decisions, with Hitler deeming himself unfit to lead, but they refuse to become disloyal. Later, Eva invites Troutel and her friend for a smoke outside before a siren signals another attack. In the evening, Schenk witnesses an unlawful execution of elderly males by military police, feeling powerless to stop it. 
upon seeing the wounded and displaced German citizens at a temporary evacuation site, he becomes forlorn. That night, Hitler enjoys the evening watching children perform a song. Afterward, he discusses the most efficient suicide methods with Eva, Troutel, and Goethe. Later, Eva and Joseph Goebbels' wife, Magda, write letters for their loved ones about the events in Berlin. Meanwhile, Troutel retrieves a document and sees a lonely Hitler feeling defeated as he stares at a painting. Above ground, Peter sadly discovers his friends from the youth squad have perished and decides to reunite with his family. Elsewhere, Hitler receives Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring's message requesting a state leadership position. Believing it is a blatant coup attempt, he becomes enraged, declaring him a traitor and that he must be stripped of his ranks immediately and prosecuted. Simultaneously, Speer arrives, checking in on a sickly Magda to convince her to flee to Schwaninwerder by barge. He then visits Eva, who is thrilled he remains loyal to the leader. However, he informs her that he will leave for Hamburg and must depart from Hitler's stead. He meets Hitler personally to tell him about his sudden departure while admitting he would never follow through with the scorched earth policy. Surprisingly, Hitler calmly accepts his decision, though he refuses to shake his hand as he departs. Later, Hitler visits an officer, Robert Ritter von Green, and aviator Hannah Reich in the infirmary as the latter recounts the tale of their survival from the Red Army. At dinner, he promotes von Green to supreme commander of the Luftwaffe, reminding him to be ruthless and to never feel compassion because it shows weakness. During the discussion, he reads the radio message from the Allied forces about Himmler's negotiation with a Swedish diplomat, Count Bernadotte. Hitler loses his temper and rambles, feeling betrayed by Himmler's action since he was his most trusted officer. He asks everyone to clear out except for Goebbels, von Green, and Reich, who he requests fly to Karl Dunitz forces to relay in order to eliminate Himmler. He also elaborates on unrealistic ways to win the war. Later, he denies SS physician Obergruppenführer Ernst Robert Gerwitz's request to leave with his family, believing his medical research must continue for the future of Germany. Another officer enters the room to inform Hitler about Fagelein's sudden disappearance, which he furiously insists might be an act of desertion and subject to execution. Meanwhile, Growitz leaves the bunker and enjoys one more dinner with his family before pulling the pin of his grenades to commit familicide. Meanwhile, SS officers storm inside the building where Fagelein is hiding and arrest the Gruppenführer for treason. Eva pleads with Hitler to spare his brother-in-law from execution for the sake of her pregnant sister, but the Fuhrer believes he collaborated with Himmler, deeming him a traitor to the Reich. In the Situation Room, he claims Lt. Gen. Walter Wenck will lead Berlin in a counterattack against the Russians, much to the officials' doubt that Wenck's small army can turn the tides of war. Later, after Fagelein's execution, Troutel awakens from slumber and rushes to the Fuhrer's office to type his political will as he dictates. Shortly after returning to her room to check the draft, Goebbels breaks down as he prepares to stay in Berlin with Hitler and ignores the evacuation order. She then witnesses Hitler marry Eva from across the hall. As the Soviet Red Army gets closer to the Chancellery, Hitler convenes with his officials but becomes disheartened by a report that Wank's 9th Army failed their counterattack after being outnumbered. Unfortunately, he continues insisting on never surrendering to the Allies. Leaving the room, he informs SS Sturmbahnfuhrer Otto Guntze he will commit suicide with Eva, requesting his corpse be burned to prevent the Soviets from taking it to Russia. Guntze then phones another officer to procure 200 liters of petrol from parked vehicles. Shortly after, Dr. Schenk and a nurse fetch Dr. Werner Haas, suffering greatly from his collapsed lung, and take him to the bunker to see Hitler. They wait outside and partake in a drinking session with the inebriated officers and Eva, joining shortly after. Dr. Schenk excuses himself to use the bathroom, only to overhear Dr. Haas and Hitler discussing the upcoming suicide attempt in great detail. He later witnesses Hitler's dog forcibly fed with the suicide pill to observe its effects. Meanwhile, while enjoying a smoke, Eva confides with Troutel about feeling disconnected from Hitler because of his secrets and work. Seeing the young girl emotional, Eva gifts her coat and requests that she promptly leave Berlin. Later, an ailing Hitler has one final dinner with his female apprentices, with Troutel noticing the Fuhrer's hand shaking uncontrollably. He later bids a heartfelt goodbye to everyone in the bunker. He prepares to lock himself and Eva in the office before Troutel storms out in horror. Minutes later, Magda tearfully pleads with Hitler to leave Berlin, but the Fuhrer stands firm in his decision and returns inside the room. Meanwhile, Troutel feeds Magda's children to prevent them from seeing Hitler in his office. Suddenly, a gunshot is heard as the Fuhrer and his wife kill themselves. Gunsha confirms the suicide in the Situation Room and immediately tasks the officers to retrieve the bodies and take them outside to be burned, despite the chaos in the city. Afterward, Goebbels assumes the Chancellorship effective immediately. Sometime later, 
General Hans Krebs fails a peaceful negotiation with Soviet Marshal Vasily Chukov, who requests the Reich's unconditional surrender, much to the ire of Goebbels, refusing to disobey Hitler. Meanwhile, Magda administers a drink to induce sleep so her children can injure the suicide pills while unconscious. Shortly after, Goebbels tells Trottle to type his political statement to be broadcast all over the city. The bunker is later cleared out, leaving Krebs and General Bergdorf to commit suicide. Above ground, a vehicle goes around town above ground, spreading Weidling's announcement of Germany's surrender. Peter hears the news and returns home to find his parents have died. Simultaneously, the Goebbels fatally shoot each other outside the bunker, and officers burn their corpses. Elsewhere, Troutel and the others escape the city, sneaking past the enemy in the middle of heavy gunfire. In the morning, she meets with Schenk at a rendezvous point and is told she and Goethe may pass through Russian patrols because they are women, though the latter wishes to stay behind. The rest of the SS officers prepare to face the Russians, only to find out Germany has wholly surrendered. Shortly after, Troutel tries blending in as she walks through the Red Army, along with Peter, who suddenly holds her hand. Fortunately, they leave unscathed. The pair ride a bike to escape following the news of the surrender on May 7, 1945. Before her final days in Munich in 2002, Troutel admits regrets about her choices during the war. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.